Today I'm going to show how to install a white line rear sway bar in an 11th gen Honda Civic Si and give my impressions on how the car feels after the install. This rear sway bar will fit a variety of Honda Civics along with Accords. Before I show how to install the sway bar, I'd like to start off by saying that I feel that this is a great first modification for your Civic Si. This rear sway bar in combination with a lower motor mount has proven to be a worthwhile and noticeable improvement. I would go so far as to say that they should be your first two modifications to your car. You will be investing very little in both mods, but gaining a big benefit in handling, which is what this car is known for. It may not be the fastest car, but what it lacks in power, it more than makes up for in handling, and that impressive handling equals fun. The kit from Whiteline comes with a sway bar, grease, and a set of polyurethane bushings. I also purchased genuine Honda Accord rear sway bar end links and brackets. The Accord end links are an upgrade from the Civics. I will have a link to all the products discussed in this video in the description below. You'll want to begin by raising the rear of the car. I found I only needed to raise one side of the car to achieve the height that I needed for this install. The rear sway bar is located right behind the T of the exhaust. The sway bar is held into place by two brackets and two end links. To remove all the bolts, I would highly recommend an impact wrench. This tool will make the install much easier. I removed each of the 14 millimeter end link bolts first. I thought I needed to use a wrench to remove the bolts, but this was not the case. I didn't see that the bolt was screwed directly into the car. After I removed both of the end links bolts, I removed the four 12 millimeter sway bar bracket bolts. I found I needed to use a short socket extension and swivel socket to reach each of the bolts. Now that all the bolts were out of the car, I used a mallet to tap the bottom of each end link to get them out of the car. At this point, I tried to remove the factory sway bar, but found it wasn't coming out. To solve this problem, I removed the two 14 millimeter bolts holding the exhaust together and pulled the exhaust apart just enough to slide the sway bar in between the exhaust. You will need a 14 millimeter socket for the impact wrench and a 14 millimeter wrench to hold the nut in place as you remove the bolt. Here you can see the difference in the 18mm OEM sway bar versus the new 22mm white line sway bar. You'll also notice that the Civic's end links are plastic, whereas the Accords are aluminum, making them much stronger and will last longer. Before I installed the new bar, I prepared it by rubbing the included grease on the bar and on the inside of each bushing. I then pulled each bushing apart and installed it on the bar. You can install the brackets onto the bushings, but
but they may pop off since they are simply pressed onto the bushings, but held in place by bolts that can't be installed until the bar is in the car. Next, I installed the end links. Before you can do that though, you will need to unscrew the factory nuts holding the Civics OEM end links to the factory sway bar. They are 12 millimeter nuts. This is where the adjustable part of the bar comes into play. The sway bar has two different stiffnesses, street and race. The top hole is for race and the bottom hole is for street. I decided to go for the street setup and installed the new end links in the bottom holes. You will need an allen key to hold the link in place as you tighten the nut. The end link nuts should be tightened to 38 foot pounds. You will not do this until after the bar has been installed. With the bar prepared for install, I moved back underneath the car. I slid the bar back up between the exhaust. I maneuvered the bar into place and then the end links. The end links have a tight fit, so if you need to readjust them, you may need to use a mallet. I found I ran into a bit of an alignment issue on one of the end links when trying to get the bolt to line up. It took a bit to get the bolt to line up perfectly, but I was able to do so with a screwdriver and a bit of patience. The end links have a torque spec of 28 foot-pounds. Once the end links were secured, I installed the two brackets. The four bracket bolts have the same torque spec as the end links, 28 foot-pounds. Also, do note that I did have to use the small socket extension and swivel socket to install the four bolts for the brackets. Reinstall the two exhaust bolts. I torqued all the bolts after I tightened up the exhaust. The only thing left to do is to lower the car and go test out the new sway bar.
Since this is my friend's car, he drove while I videoed and got his impressions of how the car's feel had changed. I wanted his thoughts and impressions since he drives the car every day. He felt the rear felt stiffer and more planted. Also, he felt the rear of the car was easier to control in the corners. He stated he wished we had installed the rear sway bar at the same time as the lower motor mount as both upgrades made the biggest impact on the car's handling. These two upgrades, along with a set of better performance tires, would be an ideal handling package for this car, easily adding a greater amount of handling and grip to an already great handling car. This added performance just adds that extra bit of fun to the car that most of us are looking for when modifying our cars. I would highly recommend this upgrade to your 11th gen Honda Civic Si. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.